Hi, welcome to another episode of the Blue Mouse Podcast. My name's Emily. I'm the full-time knitwear designer behind the Blue Mouse. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Blue Mouse. And yeah, let's just get into it. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had a regular podcast. Last week I did a Q&A where I answered all of your questions about knitting and design and anything else you wanted to know and my husband made a guest appearance at the end of that one, so if you haven't watched that and you're into that kind of thing, I'll uh, link that here as well. But for anyone that's new, this is a knitting podcast with a little bit of a focus on knitwear design because I'm a full-time knitwear designer. So it was Vogue Knitting Live Columbus this past weekend, and yeah, it was a really interesting and fun and exhausting experience for sure. I am looking forward to next year as well, but it was it was fun. It was my first Vogue and what I've heard from people is that this one is not nearly as big as the one in New York, which makes complete sense, but it was still really fun. It was downtown and at the convention center, which is massive and I took three classes and went to the marketplace and yeah, it was a fun, fun experience. So I'll start out by showing you a little bit of what I got over the weekend. So I have, <laughs> I have a lot and this is I got from buying from Yakagani Yarns. I think I'm saying that right. So to start out with. I can smush this down a little bit. So Friday was the start of Vogue and it was the first day of the marketplace and I took a class that morning. I took a class on the ergonomics of knitting with Carson Demers I think is how you say his name. And I have his book but I've just never really gotten around to reading it. So I decided to take the class and you know hopefully learn how to prevent injuries and I learned a few like key tidbits I think I'll use. A lot of it was um, some stretching that I had already known and definitions on, you know, the ergonomics of, of knitting and the yarn you use and the needles you use and the way that you knit too. So he showed some videos on, you know, ways that are easier on your body to knit and ways that are making it harder on your body to knit and I'm already knitting in the way that's easier for on my hands and my wrists. So that was that was nice to know. I was a little worried when he was pulling up the, the videos that I would have to kind of relearn how I knit. And turns out it's, you know, already one of the safer ways to do it. And so after that class, it was a three hour class in the morning, the marketplace opened and I was one of probably the first, you know, not the first people, but the first couple dozen people in the, the place. And I was walking around and I came across this one booth and I was just kind of, you know, doing a loop around trying to see what the marketplace had to offer and this girl stopped me and she said that she watches the podcast. So I, thank you, um, I was very flattered by that. So hi to you and she gave me a mini skein pack to share on the podcast. So. I wanted to show that to you guys real fast. So here's the mini skein bundle. Lots of cool and yellow tones, which is really fun. I'm wondering how these will look because they kind of look, you know, I don't know if they'll stripe or if that's speckling or anything like that, but that's really interesting. So I'll probably use these for, you know, heels, toes, and cuffs or something in the future. And her company is called Farm Girl Fibers. So I guess her name is Shauna. So hi, Shauna. Thank you so much for the gift. I was incredibly grateful and felt, you know, very loved by that. So thank you. And she is at farmgirlfiberstn.com. So here it is. I'll link it in the description, of course. But there's her card. And you can find her on Instagram and YouTube as Farm Girl Fibers. So thank you so, so much. And I believe that she, yeah, she shared a booth with 
Baw Yarns, which was a lot of self-striping yarns. So it's an independent hand dyer specializing in self-striping and gradient yarns. So she had a lot of really cool stuff too. It was a very, very beautiful booth. They had, you know, farm girl fibers on one side and ba yarns on the other. And it was a very beautiful booth. I got a little bit lost in the marketplace, but I meant to go back. But yeah, this was a very, very kind gift. I'm, I feel very, very loved. Thank you. And so I just kind of kept milling around the marketplace and was looking mainly for non-superwash yarns. That's what I was hoping to find when I went to the marketplace. So yeah, I was on the hunt for some non-superwash yarn and I didn't really find very much of it. So that's kind of the reason I didn't buy much at the actual festival is because, you know, I was looking for non-superwash for upcoming projects and that's really what I had been saving for. I've been saving for, you know, most of the year for this event to buy yarn. So, so one of the places I bought yarn at, which I'll show you, is I think Yakagani Yarns, which is the tote bag I just showed you. So yeah, I passed by her booth and I was looking through it because I, I've seen it on a podcast. I forget. It's, I forget what it's called, but it's these two sisters that live one in California, one in maybe Georgia or one of the Carolinas, and they do like a webcam podcast every time. I've seen them talk about her yarn before, and I think I've seen her at other events or people have been, you know, carrying her yarn. So all that to say that I have heard of her before. So I was looking through her yarn, and it was really, really beautiful. She mostly had, I think, fingering weight yarn, and I was on the hunt for like worsted or DK, and again, like I said, non-superwash. But I came across one of her bases and it has yak in it. So it is 20% yak, 70% superwash merino, and 10% nylon. It's called her woolly yak base. And my mom is super sensitive to wool, even just like soft superwash wool. She'll like put it up to her neck and be like, mm, I don't know. So I know that Yak is extremely, extremely soft. Anyway, so I saw this yarn and I haven't seen Yak or a base with Yak around for a good long time. So I stood in front of it for a really long time just admiring it and I took a break and I walked around the marketplace some more and I finally came back and was like, all right, I'm going to buy this and make my mom a cardigan because she really wants... I know that she really likes a thin knit cardigan and she has one that she has worn for many many years that just like the whole sleeve has like a giant hole in it it's unraveling this way and that way and it's a machine knit cardigan but I think it's her favorite and it's just absolutely falling to pieces like I think she tried to ask me to you know crochet it, like pick up the stitches and crochet it back up you know with the remaining knit threads and there just wasn't enough I don't think threads there and she's just kind of given up on it but she still wears it and loves it but I think she she won't go out in it because it just has so many holes so pretty sure that's what I'm gonna make with this I'm really sick of working with fingering weight yarn at the moment it's too slow and I don't have the patience for it but I'm gonna do it for her it won't be a Christmas gift. I thought about it, but I just really don't have time for that. <laughs> and I know if I put that pressure on myself that it'll just make the next, you know, month and a half way too stressful. So maybe, you know, end of January or something, I'll get this tour, or maybe it'll be next Christmas. But I found this yarn, I really liked it, and I think that she will too. The color of her cardigan is more of like, um, it's kind of like a really light cream color. I'm trying to think of something that is around me that's close to it. But this is more of a, I don't even know, it's like a grayish brown and I, I love this color. And the one of the reasons I really like Yak bases is that the original color of Yak yarn before you dye it, I think is more of like a grayish brown, so it's a lot like this. I think this is dyed. Um, and so, it just gives everything this kind of brownishy tint to it. 
Like here's a different color. This is a purple. And you can kind of still see that, the brownish stuff coming through. So I got three for my mom to make her a sweater. And then this is also, so it's Yakagani Yarns in the Wooly Yak Base. It's a hand-dyed, three-ply, fingering weight. And this is the color Naked. Can you see that? So that's what these three are. They're extremely, extremely soft. I mean, just look at the way the drape. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's going to be a really wonderful cardigan. And then I really love the base and kind of wanted a cardigan for myself as well. But besides not having the patience to knit two fingering weight cardigans coming up, I just decided it would be too expensive too. So I got one skein for myself, I think. I might make it into like a scarf for my mom for Christmas. I don't know. Or I might keep it. We'll see. But this is the same base and this is the Valentine colorway. So it's just a really pretty pinky brown. I don't know how to describe it because it is pink. It's like a pinkish purple but then it has just like this undertone of like a brown. I don't know. I don't know if a tawny brown is the right color but I got that. So actually I forgot. Before I found that yarn I found this other kind of yarn and this is Knitcraft and Knittery and this is an Australian wool. So the colorway is called Queen of the Damned and it's 100% sustainable Australian merino wool in a fingering weight and it has 437 yards to 100 grams. So here it is. It's this beautiful purple. They are all the same dye lot. I think we checked, but this one is looking a little darker on camera. This is probably a more accurate colorway back here. It gets a little brighter when I put it up to the screen, but it's just this beautiful purple and it is incredibly soft. Not quite as soft as the Yak, but it is very soft for a merino. And I think, didn't it say ultra fine or something like that? Nope, it's just merino, Australian merino. It's very, very soft. I loved it. And so actually I found this first and I'm, I'm happy that I bought it. But I did make the purchase before I had done my full loop around the marketplace. So I bought it and then I found the yak and was like, this is actually more what I want. So I bought this for my mom to make her a cardigan initially because it is very, very soft. And I follow these people on Instagram, the Knit Craft and Knittery. And so... I was a little flustered by the whole marketplace. It was huge, and I was walking in and going around it by myself, which is a lot for me. I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I, I struggle with, with crowds of people, especially alone. So I was a bit overwhelmed, and I you know, have wanted to buy yarn from these people before, and so I did, and I, I'm very happy with the purchase. And they actually did not have a booth there. It was, a, I think, a yarn store that was selling them, or selling their yarn. So, I didn't know that at first. <laughs> I was kind of flustered and not paying attention because I ran into, I think her name's Marie Green of Olive Knits there. She was in that booth and I got a little flustered like talking to her and feeling uncomfortable because I'm a bit awkward. So, I don't know, I was a bit flustered and I saw this yarn and I was like, oh, Knitcrafted Knittery. I've, I think I follow them on Instagram and get their newsletter and stuff. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. I want to try this yarn. So I bought the yarn and I was talking to the woman checking me out because in my mind I was like, this is, you know, their booth. And I was like, oh, I follow you on Instagram. And the whole time I'm thinking, I don't feel like she looks like the person that I follow on Instagram because it was kind of a, an older woman. I was like, I really don't feel like this is the same one. And then I was walking by later and noticed that it was a, I think a yarn store selling a bunch of different yarns. That's my bad. But um, anyway, I'm happy with this purchase. 
I will not be using it for a cardigan for my mom because I have another yarn for that, but I'll find a use for this. It's a sweater's quantity of fingering weight. It will probably stay in my stash for maybe a year because I am giving fingering weight yarn a break. <laughs> I'm sick of it at the moment. And then one more thing. So I've already kind of removed one of them from the bundle, but one of my dear, dear knitting friends was in town for Vogue. It was kind of a last minute thing. She lives in Wisconsin and texted me and said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of coming to Vogue. I was like, you can stay with me. So Ashley of Folk and Fiber Co. came with her husband and she stayed with us one of the weekend nights. And she gifted this to me, which, oh, I love Ashley. It was so, so fun to have her in town. I don't really have any like knitting friends in town. I think I'm starting to get to that point, but I'm I'm not there yet. So to have her come into town for Vogue was so so good. Um so she and her husband came in and Friday kind of did their own thing and then Saturday we got breakfast and then I took my class and we met up afterwards and just hung out at my or my place <laughs> or our, our place, I guess. Um, and then we did a little bit of like a knit night, so we just were kind of messaging a few people in town that were at Vogue that either Ashley had seen or that I had messaged on Instagram, and we met up at a coffee shop in town, and we had a little bit of a knit night, it was really fun, and Tony from TL Yarn Crafts showed up near the end too, which was really cool, it's great to see her. We live in the same city, and I like almost never see her so that was a, a real treat and yeah it was just really really nice to be among you know your people I guess you know it's very different to be you know knitting with people or knitting around people who don't know how to knit or have no interest in it because you know they don't really know what you're talking about they they ask they're kind and they ask about your business and your life and what you're working on but it's very, very different to be around your own people, to be around knitters. So it was great. It was really, really great. I was kind of running on fumes. I had like a tiny bit of breakfast in the morning and then this was like 7.30 at night and I hadn't really eaten since, so I was struggling to make it through. But it was very, very worth it. It was super fun. And then Ashley and I just went home, we picked up pizza on the way home, and sat and ate pizza with um, Johnny and Alex too, and just all chatted, and then the guys went to bed, or Johnny went to bed, and then I think Alex went to bed a little, a little bit later, and yeah, she and I just stayed out talking for like hours, I think we were up until like, I don't know, almost 2 o'clock or something, and... It was a time change, so it was actually 3 o'clock. It was so much fun to just sit and talk and talk business and talk just knitting and life and everything. It was really, really refreshing. So I had the best time. I really wish that she lived closer, but she lives like eight hours away. So we're planning, you know, probably another knitting event next year with a few people. And I'm so, so excited for that. I, I can't wait. So, yeah, it was really great, and all through the knit night, she was, like, pulling out this mini seam bundle, and she showed it to a couple people, and the whole time I was like, those are my colors. I love those colors. And then at the end of the night, before she went to bed, she, like, gave me this mini seam bundle, and she's like, yeah, I was saving this for you. I thought you might like it, and, oh, I was so happy, because these are definitely my colors. <laughs> So there is one missing. I pulled one out and was kind of playing with it when we were just sitting and talking. And yeah, I can't get it back into a good skein. I really, really can't. I've tried it like four times to twist it back up. I know the concept of, you know, winding up the skein, but I'm not very good at it. So <laughs> that's mine and these are hers. Nicely done. So. This is her Autumn Classic Sock Minis, and it's five skeins of an 80-20 blend, and they're 20 grams, so they're 80 
yards each. And, oh, are these just not the most amazing colors? Oh, ah, uh, I really, really love them. I could make a sweater in every single one of these colors and be overjoyed. <laughs> so I kind of already have plans for these. I got the idea for it just the other night, actually, because I wanted to use them for something. So when I have time, hopefully before Christmas, I'm going to do something fun with these minis. Because don't we all have just like a few minis lying around that you have no idea what to do with? And Maybe you're not a scrappy sock person, or you don't have enough for a scrappy blanket or a sweater or something. So I've got something up my sleeve for that. But it was really, really kind of her, and I would love to use her yarn in the future. So I think I'm going to be reaching out probably early next year for something, because she has just such an amazing eye for colors, and especially like solids like this. I know speckles are a huge thing, but I use solids way more. I almost never use speckles anymore because I just love the way solids look. Oh, it's amazing. So I actually have a sweater idea in this kind of pinky color here. So I don't know. Actually, if you're watching, I'm going to be reaching out to you early next year because I really do want to use your yarn because I really like it. It's amazing. So, yes, I have a few more things that I was gifted prior to Vogue Knitting, and there's a, it's a huge bundle of skeins, and I'm just, I'm going to show you next time, I think, but anyway, I had a great time at Vogue, and met some amazing people in my classes, and met some local people, and it was really fun. I took that ergonomics of knitting class at the start of the weekend and then Saturday I took a class with Melissa Leapman who I did not know was like a really big knitting author until maybe like an hour beforehand so she's a really big author in the knitting community and I took a class called yoking around and it was how to design yoke sweaters and I was hoping to learn some things about designing yoke sweaters that I didn't already know and it was it was a pretty basic class for people who had like never done yoke sweaters before or never designed a yoke sweater before so a lot of it was like um, things I already knew so I, I learned a couple things from it and was able to ask the teacher you know a little bit of questions about grading and she, you know, it was like two minutes before class ended, so she gave me a little bit of a tidbit and then, um, you know, class ended. But it was, it was fun to be in that class and, you know, just kind of see how another designer does things. And within the past couple of weeks, I think I've had colorwork yokes have clicked for me. I don't know how it happened or what did it really. But I was just, you know, really wanting to design color work yokes and I didn't understand how to do it. And I had it explained to me that it's wedges. So you start small and then it grows. So it's like a triangle. So you start up here and then you increase and then you just have a bunch of wedges making up your yoke. And that was, you know, described to me and it was like, Everything made sense and I totally understood it and I just spent a couple hours messing around in a charting program and figured out how you increase and decrease in a chart and so now, I don't know, it, it all clicks so I have, I have ideas up my sleeve but that brings me actually to my first whip which I have to get done before I can do anything else so I'm very close to being done with Lofoten. It's almost entirely written and rewritten about four times. I had to redo the yoke five times, I think, but it still only took me a couple days. And I actually knit the entire yoke and then separated for the sleeves. 
and tried it on and it looked terrible. So that was a bit soul crushing to get that far into it, into the writing process and knitting all of it and then to try it on and have it be like, look terrible. So I panicked and I blocked it because I was like, well, maybe it'll just block out and it didn't block out, but I know what happened. So I knit the entire one and it's still drying from my panic blocking and I have a second one. So I just picked up another skein and wound it and here we are. So if you know anything about my fingering weight Lofoten pattern, I wear it a lot. It's my favorite. I've had requests from people to do a worsted weight version for a good long while. So Allie dyed up yarn for me, which I showed a few episodes ago, and it's amazing. I love it. And I've just started the fading. So if you'll notice, if you're familiar at all with Lofoten, it has three drop stitch details in the yoke. And this one only has two because I didn't really have enough rows to do three and I didn't want the drop stitches to you know hit hit low in the bust and be kind of awkward so I just stuck with two which you can see here and yeah I'm using the what is it called the right lifted increase as my increases in this yoke and they are pretty much invisible they're my favorite now I used to use make ones but make ones leave a hole so, let me see if I can show you. It's actually an increase right there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's no hole. It's really, really nice. And it essentially just kind of makes it look like two stitches branch off from one, but it's really, really invisible. So I'm very happy with that. And I've just barely started the fading, so you can kind of see how this two row section here is a different color but you know they kind of blend in together because it's like a pink speckled with a pink solid so this one's called mountains at dusk and I'm almost out of yarn there and then this one is I think rose quartz so this is my first fade and even though they're both pinks, they kind of contrast a little bit, not a ton, it's still kind of a subtle fade, but they contrast enough because this is kind of a cool tone pink, and this is a warm tone pink to me at least. So yeah, it's interesting. The other skein I used for the first yoke I've made was very blue heavy at the start, and this one is pretty, pretty light pink heavy. Maybe it doesn't look like it on the screen, but there was a ton of blue in that first one, and this one is more of the pink, which is fun. So I am, I don't know, I'm a little bit more than halfway done with the yoke, and Johnny and I are going on a drive today, so I'm going to try and bring that with me. I'm fully done with the increases, and it already looks so much better than the other one. The other one, I increased too many stitches too fast, and so it kind of bubbles. Like it ripples a little bit around here. It doesn't, it doesn't look nice. So I know if you look up like how to design a yoke that a lot of resources say to do it in about three increase rows and I don't like the way that that has worked for me in the past. I always use about six or seven increase rows and start out increasing more and then increase less as you go down and that has worked really well for me. I mean, I'm sure you could do it in three, but just personally, I, I find that six or seven works a lot better for me. And it just creates kind of a nicer, a nicer seated yoke, I guess. So yeah, that's that project. It's in her, or in Allie's Carlsbad Worsted. And I forget, it's got like 220 or 230 yards to 100 grams. And that is Alley of Explore Knits and Fibers, so that's her yarn, which of course is linked in the show notes, which are linked below. And then this is another project that I started a couple weeks ago, and it was fast in the beginning, but I've hit a snag at the decreases, and 
I need to finish the photon before I can finish this, but I think I've figured it out, so we'll see. But if you're a patron, you've already seen this. I showed this to you like a week and a half ago or something. But I've started working on a new hat because I wanted a faster project than a sweater. It is in fingering weight yarn, but it's a hat and the cables show up so well. So here it is. So it's just, you know, two different kinds of cables. So that's more of like a staghorn. And I don't even know what that is called. It's not that bright. It's, it's this color for sure. It just gets brighter up close to the screen. And I know that this looks kind of funky. Like it looks like it puckers and looks weird. And it just is kind of wavy and it doesn't look like it's supposed to be that way. But when you put it on, it just creates this nice really fun rolled hem. So yeah, this is my new project. I have to close the hat, or how close the decrease is, fairly quickly, I think. So, yeah, I don't know. I like it. It's fun. I might have to play with the decreases a little bit more, because now that I've tried it on again, I feel like the decreases are going to be too slow. Because it has to, it doesn't have much to go left on, you know, the hat. So maybe I have to rip back a little bit more. But I have put a lifeline in so that I can just rip it out as I've had to do already once. So it works for me. And that is using Woolen Boone Classic. I think it's their sock base. It's just a classic base in the colorway chalkboard, I believe. I've had that yarn for a year. I think I bought it two Septembers ago. And it's really nice. I like the color a lot. It still shows up the cables really well, which you can't really tell from back there probably, but it shows up the stitch definition really well, and it's pretty soft and elastic, and I like it. It does dye my hands like crazy though. Like as I'm knitting with it, my hands will be just like black all around where I was holding the yarn. Like where I tension the yarn over my finger, there's always just like a, a black mark over it every time, and it takes me like most of the day to get it to wash off after so many times washing my hands. So that's the only like thing about it that isn't ideal, but I think that's just what happens when you get such a dark color, is it has to use a lot of dye. So I assume that that will stop after, you know, I'm done working with it. And I think it only comes off on like your skin and more so on your hands because of the oils in your hands or something like that, I believe I have read. So it shouldn't come off on your clothes. I don't believe so. I will give you one quick update on a sweater that you've seen for way too long now. I worked on it over the weekend at Vogue and I've put it down to finish Lofoten, but this is that men's sweater. So it's a men's seed stitch sweater. I have one sleeve done. It's super long. And then I am close to finishing the body. I think I needed 20 repeats and I have about 15. So about three quarters of the way done and then I have some ribbing and the other sleeve. But as soon as I'm finished with the body, or maybe even before then, I will send it off to my tech editor and then get it to test knitting. And it'll have a long, a long deadline because there's just so much more knitting involved with a man's sweater than with the females, usually. Because their arms are longer than ours, and I feel like the sweater has to be longer, and um, yeah, the sizing is just a bit different on everything, um, including the upper arms are usually bigger than women's. So yeah, I'm not in any rush to get that one out, so it'll probably be a good a good while. It is a DK weight sweater, so that helps. But yeah, I haven't knit on this since Saturday, I think. Maybe a little bit on Sunday during my last class. But I'll get back to it as soon as I finish Lofoten. I was waiting to take that yoke class before I wrote the new Lofoten sweater because I wanted to see if there was, you know, an easier way of doing things. And so now I'm scrambling because it, it needs to be out in like mid 
December probably. So I am trying to get that done. Should have it out to my tech editor either today or tomorrow. So fingers crossed, right? So yeah, I have more to share next week for sure because I had been saving a lot of money for the marketplace at Vogue and they didn't have any real non-superwash yarn. There was one one company that did, but they only sold kits and I, you know, wanted like a sweater's quantity in like a certain color or something. So they did say that she like recognized me, which was crazy, but she did say I could reach out if I wanted to use their yarn. So I'm going to write them down for, you know, potential future stuff. But I decided that I was going to come home and spend the rest of my budget on yarn that I had truly wanted. And so I bought more of Dererum Natura or Dererum Natura, however you want to say it. It's a French wool company. And I've heard people say it both ways, so I'm sure I'm butchering it because I don't, you know, know French. But they have their Worsted, which is a Gilead base, and then they have and then they have their DK, which is a Ulysses. It's extremely affordable and very soft for non-superwash wool. And so this is their Gilead, and I have their, or their, sorry, this is their Ulysses. And I have their Gilead somewhere, but this is their DK, and this color is just, oh, I love it. So I have this wound up because I'm actually going to use this on a colorwork sweater in the future, and I was swatching. So this is another color of it that I have. So I was swatching with it, and I love it. The drape is fantastic. It's super soft and lofty and breathable, and yeah, it's one of my favorites. I made my Murin sweater out of it over the summer, and yeah, I have plans to make so much more. So yeah, I went a bit overboard with how much of that yarn that I bought, but I know that I will use it, and yeah, I just decided to go for it because I had budgeted a certain amount and why save up if you're not going to use it? So, yes, I purchased a lot of it from Espostrico because nobody in the States sells it. So you have to get it from overseas and if you get it from the company's website, like the Dererum Natura website, it takes a while to get here. I Think, and the shipping was like $25, which is a, it's a painful one. I don't think that they do free shipping over a certain amount, whereas like Espostri Co. does, even though their yarn is like a little bit more per ball, it still I think ended up being cheaper to buy it there, because buying it from the brand's website, I think it was $20 for a small amount and it just kept going up the more you bought instead of like the more you buy the cheaper the shipping is, which is usually how companies do it. So I decided to buy most of it from Espostrico and I think I bought a lot of their Ulysses and only a little bit of Gilead because they were out of the colors of Gilead that I wanted. So then I was searching around trying to find some place that had the color of the worsted weight yarn that I wanted and I found Isolde Teague's website and she sells it and she had plenty of the color I wanted so I ordered two sweaters quantity of that color because I want to make my dad a sweater for Christmas and I think I can do it because it's worsted weight and it's super chunky and lofty and, and amazing so yeah it's gonna be a or two giant shipments and I, bo I got sh free shipping on both because of the amount that I bought. And yeah, I've just got a few fun things coming my way. And Shibui Yarns sent me like a sampler box with like 13 skeins in it, which is insane. So I'll touch on that next week because this is a lot. And yeah, I've got a couple other like things that I'm going to be reviewing and testing out for people too. I know someone is sending me a pair of sock blockers that are like kind of unique and adjustable in their size, which I thought was really interesting. And then someone else is going to be sending me stitch, marker, stitch markers to try out. So it's going to be a busy, busy couple of weeks or actually a couple of months. Who am I kidding? 
but very, very fun. So, yeah. I'm going to be playing around with Shibuya yarns next week to figure out a combo of yarns that, you know, gets the weight that I want it to be. And I'll show you my idea, and yeah. I'll probably show, you know, I think my patrons will probably see a little bit more of that in the vlog before the podcast or anything. And I'm going to be sharing some of the recipes I've been trying on Patreon as well. So, yeah, I don't know. I will see you guys next week. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Johnny and I are off to make a quick lunch and, or a late lunch actually, and go on a drive. It's our date night and just kind of feel like we need to get outdoors, get some perspective and fresh air and everything. So we're just going to go drive and see if we can find a diner or, you know, ice cream shop or something. Um, probably like an hour outside of town. And then I made sourdough pizza dough for the first time. So we're going to have like sourdough pizza tonight, which I'm really hoping is amazing. The photos look fantastic, but the instructions kind of leave something to be desired. There's not a whole lot of information in them. So hopefully it works out. We shall see. But yeah, anyway, have a great rest of your weekend. I hope to see you next time. Please say hi in the comments. Ask any questions or anything you want in the comments. I always love to chat with you guys. So, see you next time.